name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit. Let me greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'd like to say that I am very happy to be with you this morning. Uh, I think I last visited this parish about 6,000 years ago. No, not quite. <laughs> it feels like that about six years ago, when I was uh, still the Bishop of Natal. As you know, I'm now retired as a Bishop, although the diocese keeps me very busy. And Father Stemby, so it's also keeping me busy. He doesn't like to see me going to the beach to fish and to swim. But it, it, it's really nice to be with you, and any bishop enjoys doing a confirmation for those who have made that decision to be confirmed. A confirmation is a very special service, as you know. There are two parts to the service of becoming members of the church, of being initiated into the church. The first is baptism, and the second is confirmation. And they actually go together. Sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, when we uh, baptize an adult, we also confirm them at the same time. But otherwise, those two uh, services are separated, baptism and confirmation. So those of you who are being confirmed today, congratulations by the way, that you made it this far, you have already been confirmed, maybe recently, or when you were a little baby, you remember when you were a baby, you know, you came to be baptized and how you cried and you splash water on the bishop's face and or the Mundi's face, okay? But I hope you won't do that today. Alright. You have to be here. Um, so what's uh, confirmation all about? Why are you being confirmed? Do you have to get confirmed? Yes. As I was saying, there are, this confirmation is becoming a full member of the church. When you get confirmed, you are becoming, you become a full member of the church. It's a little bit like joining a club. If you want to join a, a, a netball club or a cricket club or, or, or soccer, I don't like to talk about soccer these days because my team, Buccaneers, is doing very badly. <laughs> you must pray for us, please. We need to pray, okay? Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but when you, when you want to join a club, and even the church, you have to be formally admitted into that club or into an organization and suddenly into the church. And the way you and I and I become full members of the church is through baptism and confirmation. These are called services of initiation where we are born and made full members of the church. And those of you who will be confirmed, if you haven't already done so, you will be able to receive Holy Communion. Some of you may be doing that for the first time. You will come to the altar and uh, Baba Nchanga said, I 
we will administer Holy Communion to you. I still remember the day I received Holy Communion for the first time. That was a long time ago. I think about three million years ago. <laughs> when I was still there. If my wife were here, she'd say no, it's more than like 20 million. <laughs> but it was such a joy to come to the altar of the Lord and to receive his life in the sacrament. Because you're not receiving bread and, and wine, no. You are receiving this life of Christ. And how wonderful it is that when we come to receive communion, we're receiving this life, this life of Christ who strengthens us, who blesses us, who forgives us. So when we leave church at the end of this, we are not leaving Jesus behind, are we? No, he's coming with us because he is a part of our lives and we are a part of his life. Wherever we go, whether we be to school or to be with our friends, if you're a young person, so on, you know that Christ is your companion. Christ is with you. It's, it, it's what that scripture verse says in John 15. I am the vine, you are the branches. So when we get confirmed, when we receive the gift of confirmation, we become the branches that's a part of the divine who is Jesus Christ. You see that? So we are not alone. In baptism and confirmation, we become a part of the family of God. And it's, it's very special. It's wonderful that wherever we are, at work, or at school, or any other place, we know that Christ is with us. He, to pray from the scriptures, He abides with us. He is always guiding us, and leading us, and filling us, and even healing us. Sometimes we reject that. Sometimes we walk away from Jesus because of what we do. And of course it doesn't make him happy. So there's this wonderful analogy of the vine and the branches, which is what happens in confirmation. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, we read and this is at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. It says, when Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, you see, he was a little boy as well, we, don't, we forget that sometimes. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. For you and me, our Sabbath is today, it's a Sunday. For the Jews, it is on a Saturday. Anyway, Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And you are here today on the Christian Sabbath to pray. And Jesus did what I'm doing at the moment. It says that when he was in the synagogue, and as was the custom, he stood up, he went, and he opened the Torah, the Jewish book, and he read uh, these words from the prophet Isaiah, which is in the Old Testament, obviously. And those words that he read were these. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captive, 
and recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free. And then Jesus wrote out the scroll, which is equipped into the Bible. He wrote it out, and the people looked at him in awe and wonder. And for you and me, my sisters and brothers, that the Bible is, is at the very center of our worship, isn't it? And I know most of us have Bibles, we should all have a Bible, but we shouldn't let it collect us, we should read the Bible. Because when we read the scripture, we're hearing the voice of God. It is God speaking to us through the scripture. And we are being reminded as Jesus read from the scriptures that the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And you who are being confirmed today, and you who have already been confirmed, you have been anointed by God. Think about that for a minute. God is anointing you. God, for those of you who have already been confirmed, God has anointed you and made you his child, his daughter and his son. You belong to him. So we are not alone wherever we are. Whether we're at school, on the playing field, or at work, or at home with our families, God is with us, always. The question is, do I open my heart to God? Do I allow God to speak to me? Do I allow God to lead me and to guide me? Or do I do my own thing? Having become a child of God through baptism and confirmation, do I just go my own separate way away from God? And you see, when we, when we walk away from God and we do the things that are not right, that are not of God, then we can't blame God. We have to take responsibility because God wants us to be his true son and daughter. And, and God gives us the Holy Spirit and the service of confirmation is about God giving you the strength of his Holy Spirit. You are being, to use a exactly difficult word, uh, to be anointed. You are being anointed by the Holy Spirit today. Think about that for a second. And when you leave this church, having received this gift of confirmation, this anointing of the Holy Spirit, you have strength. You have strength. The strength that God gives you. You have guidance. The guidance that God gives to you. You are able to live the life that God is happy with. You don't have to give in to wrongdoing or temptation because you have been given in your confirmation the gift, the power of the Holy Spirit to do that which God wants you to do. When Jesus was anointed, as you are being anointed today, and like Jesus, when you get anointed with the Spirit of God and we use holy oil, which is blessed by the bishop in the cathedral on, on, on a particular day in the Holy Week, on Monday, Thursday, then you receive that strength. And when Jesus received that anointing, we read in the scriptures, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captive. That's what Jesus did. Having received the Spirit of God, the power of God, 
the love of God, the strength of God, when he was anointed, as you are being anointed, he went out to do the work of God and into God. It's quite a thing, isn't it? I think we forget sometimes how important this confirmation is. And in this confirmation today, you are going to make vows to God and to the church. You will promise today to follow Him. Now, you and I know that that isn't always easy, if we're going to be honest. Often it's a challenge. Often we are led to do the wrong thing. Often we are tempted. Often we, we break all the rules. Often we, we are not as obedient as God calls us to be. Often we give in to this temptation. But then, I want to remind you that you and I, and I include myself, we are not alone, we have the Spirit of God. And I want to end with this, that when I confirm you today, I will say, I anoint you. Uh, I, I dip my finger in the holy oil, uh, and I, I will make the sign on your forehead, I say, I anoint you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then I pray that you will be strengthened by the Spirit of God to do His will. We are all tempted. We are all being led to do that is wrong. I include myself, I'm saying we, I'm not saying you, okay? We are all tempted to do that which is wrong, that isn't right. But we don't have to. We don't have to give in to all that temptation. We don't have to break the rules that God has given to us. If we, as God's children, are going to live fulfilled lives, if we are going to receive the true blessing of God, then we have to live the life that pleases God. And as I said, and I'm repeating, you are not on your own. You have the power of God not to be tempted, not to do anything that is not of God, but to live a life that will please God. And I want to say to the young people, as a bishop, I've always been very excited about the fact that young people come to church. Uh, not that the others are not important, you understand me. But I, I get so excited uh, that, that young people come to church, they're part of the community, that they get confirmed, that they receive communion, because I think so many of our young people are being led straight to death. There's so many temptations in the world, so many temptations of the devil. And young people, remember, when you come and you kneel before me, I will make the sign of the cross. When you have your shower tonight or whenever, that will be washed away. But the cross will still remain on your heart. Okay? You understand me? Nothing can take that away. No amount of shards, nothing that anybody does to you will take away the cross that's been made today on you, on your confirmation. Nobody can take away that cross. And that cross stands for the love of God. It stands for Jesus giving his life and as the hymn says, so that you might have life. You become a child of God in a new and fresh way by the giving of your life today. And the last thing I want to say, the confirmation has another part to it. I'm sure you know what that is. And that is receiving Holy Communion. 
you see. In our church, when he goes to our confirmed country communion, and what happens in Holy Communion? You receive the body and blood of Christ. And again, we remember that Jesus gave his life on the cross. He sacrificed his life so that you and I can have that life. We kneel, for those of us who can kneel, at the altar. We humble ourselves and we put out our hands or we receive straight into our mouths, some of us. We receive the life of Christ. We're not receiving bread and wine. You can do that when you uh, uh, when you lose our homework here, whatever. Okay. You're not receiving bread and wine. You're receiving the very life of Christ who strengthens you to live the life that God wants you to live. So I am so grateful that for those of you who are in the film today, uh, be strong. You will be tempted as Jesus was tempted in the desert. But be strong and know that God is with you, that God blesses you today. It's not me, it's the Lord who fills you with his love. When you leave this building, know that when you go to school, from the, from what you gave with the football stadium, whatever it is that you do, remember God when you are with your friends. Remember God is with you in your heart. Because you today have been anointed with holy oil and been made in a new way a child of God. That's a great gift to receive. It's a great gift that you receive today in being anointed by the Spirit of God. May God bless you. Uh, uh, thank you, Bob and Kangasne, for uh, inviting me today. He's a, he's a very special man. We've been friends for, for a long time. I don't always make it public because it's not good for my image, but David knows. It's not good. Uh, wonderful man of God.